Mr. Hauske, uh, Martin Hauske, right, uh, from uh, Nokia, what thoughts you had, but I uh, was hoping you could touch on some of that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, distinguished chairman, for uh, giving me the floor. And it's an honor to be here. Uh, I've been in India uh, over 15 years now and seen the smart grid journey from uh, Tata Power at that time with Reji. So it is nice to see uh, that we, the country is moving. Uh, since then, obviously, things have happened. Uh, when you would have told me 15 years ago that a country would be run with solar, I would have laughed you out of the room. I said, that's impossible. Solar is best for NASA, for some satellites. Uh, now Germany uh, is running 100% renewables over multiple days. Now 40 days with negative prices. And India, the prices now is cheaper than coal. So I think uh, the world has significantly changed. In this new world, I want to point out how it's necessary to have holistic analytics. Because smart metering, just for the purpose of reducing theft, is a 15-year-old concept. We need to look at to your point, and you previously mentioned utilities are data rich. How can we integrate that to other pieces? And I want to give some examples and some requirements. I want to start with uh, SEMPRA, which is in California at the forefront of some of those changes. Uh, they were facing the uh, customers that can produce 70, 70 percent of their own power with rooftop solar and batteries. So, what's the point of it being a utility? becomes expensive backup power. Unless they manage, like I noticed, uh, Nikki also changed, uh, and no longer you mentioned that you're moving to a DSO concept. That you are no longer just the provider of power distributor, but more of an Uber concept as a platform. And looking at that concept, they felt we must be able to see and manage solar, inverters, batteries. If we cannot manage that, and so when we think of a use case, yes, smart metering is nice, but if I want to control the inverter because my renewable goes above 25%, I've got voltage problems, all kinds of grief happens, I must be able to control that. Try that with smart metering and you will fail. It's operational system, you will need to have much faster. So the use cases are important. When you think of designing a holistic system, what are the use cases of the problem we try to solve? So uh, the first part is for me this platform business managing solar. Uh, the second one is benefit to consumer. Uh, an example from similar to India in uh, Brazil. Uh, Brazil Electro, uh, the subsidiary of Iberdrola, they were looking at how can we help consumers save money. That's the typical smart metering expert. But just that alone is, I think, customers may argue, hey, I never look at my bill. Majority of consumers, if you remember those discussions when there were uh, those displays, uh, or better, they handed out even free panels, 90% ended up in the drawer and never to be used or thrown away. And so this was absolutely useless. Consumer doesn't care. They want to have somebody manage it for them. But they said, I care about outages. So if my, you can help me based on that information. I like your point, Ketan, about how to leverage that information, how you uh, operationalize it. If you can improve my outages, have more reliable power, great, I love that. So uh, Electrobra uh, used the data also for outage management, and that was one of the key drivers on top of the uh, input. Then I talked about uh, renewables. When you've got all those wind farms, in the end it is a very low margin business. Uh, and the bidding in India on solar farms, we talked to some uh, operators, some IPPs here, they all want to get their panels more efficient. If they have some panels not producing power, they will miss their target. They will, it's barely break even as it is. So they need to have better operation. We are working with wind farms, uh, with other renewables globally to monitor the wind farms. And something that you may not be aware of, Nokia bought a company called Spacetime Insight. Yep. That Accenture also has been interested uh, implementing in Canada in hydro, and that helps them optimize the assets, uh, failure analytics, those kind of things that we really drive money, including asset ex analytics to extend the life of assets, but save some extra money for the consumer. The, uh, on the renewables, second part for me, in particular in Indian context, uh, I think you are all familiar with Mahindra. Mm -hmm. um, so Mahindra just uh, agreed to invest uh, in an Israeli company called Aquarius. And Aquarius is uh, 
a revolutionary linear engine. What you say, a generator is like not a mousetrap. But this engine has 50 sensors, and together with Nokia's analytics and remote monitoring, it provides like jet engine monitoring. So then you have got 40 cents instead of 70 cents, lower cost, 2,000 hour maintenance, and the SLAs of remote monitoring. Again, to your point, if you cannot, if you want to manage it, you must measure it. If you don't measure, then well, I'll just pray that this darn thing works. And then somebody forgot to turn the screw. Uh, the number one failure reason is that the generator breaks down. The uh, uh, last example I want to bring is ABB, because we are talking about what's the future as well. And I think our job is to think a bit ahead. Uh, 5G is coming, and we've already tested teleprotection with 5G, uh, with wind farms, with renewables, which is, I think, that uh, next step if we see the future. India is an island. Germany luckily had France next door to bail us out <laughs> last summer, otherwise we would have gone black. So I uh, hope sincerely that India thinks about what is the variable laws that you have, what are the control mechanisms you have, and the demand responses to slow. We also have neighbors. I don't expect Pakistan to supply you, I'm sorry, I may be proven wrong. So to summarize uh, three points, uh, we need to look at it holistically, uh, look not only at the consumer aspect, what are the operational benefits on outage management, on asset management, on integrating renewables. Number two, um, we need to look at proven technologies, I think that was already mentioned before, and integration of the systems, and lastly, from business model, in order uh, to have an operation, well, we need to go digitize and automate. Because if you have one million devices or ten million devices, we cannot monitor one by one. Right. Thank you very much. Well, I think, Martin, so you raised some very interesting uh, and very uh, thought-provoking uh, ideas there. Because uh, you, this is kind of what I was talking about, right? Out of the box. You, you, you've got to think out of the box. Because when you're looking at meter analytics, it's not just the meter. Because the meter is just one component in the overall electric utility ecosystem. And with the smart grid causing all those silos to dissolve, you've got to look at the big picture in the context of increasing renewable penetration, increasing cybersecurity challenges, increasing awareness of the customers who want greater and more services, and last but not the least, the ability for them to be able to monetize and the ability for the utility to be able to monetize and use that opportunity to create other alternate revenue streams that the discoms can then make. Because my philosophy of looking at life is very simple. Either you make more money or you start cutting back on your operational expenditure and try to create opportunities and avenues for more efficiency.